Working on a Hitachi LE55A6R9. Um, this TV, it was, it would power up. You could do the flashlight test on it and shine a flashlight. You could see the menus, change the inputs, sound still worked, everything still worked, but couldn't, there was no backlight. So um, I found a video on YouTube um, by shopjimmy.com. Uh, they sell a bunch of parts for repairing TVs, but I found a video on how to get down to this level. Um, these are all the LED strips in this TV. Uh, let's see, there's two, four, six, and each strip has, looks like 10, two, four, six, 10 or 11 LEDs per strip. Um, these strips are joined in the middle. There's a little connector. And so they sell these strips. They're all individually. And you connect the two pieces at the middle here. And they just double stick tape down. Um, this thing over here, this is the reflector. And you can see some of the double sided tape here. This is laying face down. But it just goes, goes over the top of the LED strips over there, all the little lenses fit through all these holes. But <clears throat> testing the power supply on the back, this particular TV does not have a separate LED driver. Clean this up here. So the LEDs are driven off of the power supply board here. So you've got two connectors that go into, um, into the other side of this case. Um, two connectors, both have two wires, and these are what drive the LED strips. So what you can do is grab a multimeter and you set it to the highest DC voltage range that you have. And you put the red lead on this top one. And then you can do it either way. I did um, red on this red wire, black on this black wire. Powered the TV up. I had 191 volts there. But I read that if you do the black just to the chassis ground, anywhere on this metal, and then check here if you're putting out 250 plus volts that indicates that you have an open circuit in your LED strips because all of the LEDs are wired in series so I'm gonna lay this back down here So going along, um, you can see all the LEDs look pretty good, but this one here looks a little burnt. <clears throat> but the thing that I like about these strips is you can see they've got a plus and a minus, and you can actually get through the solder mask. They left just a little test spot open around the solder mask. So we can actually go through and test these LEDs. You want to set your meter on the diode setting and then we don't necessarily need the meter i'm going to turn this light out <clears throat> so with your meter on diode setting um, it'll actually push a little bit of current through your leads and that's how it determines if there's continuity well we know a diode will allow current to flow one direction and not the other direction so i've got a plus marked here and a minus marked here, and I'm just gonna hit those little test spots with my meter, and it should cause the LED to light up ever so slightly. So we can tell that LED is good. Um, I'll go again to this one. So that one lights up. Now this one here that looks burnt, let's see if I can keep my hands out of the camera. I 
I've actually got a dead short through that LED. So, again, we'll go on this one. So, it lights up. But this one is dead shorted. So, I'm going to attempt to replace just this LED instead of buying all the strips. I'm going to go through and test all of the other LEDs as well because there could be another one that's bad. I suspect that someone has attempted this repair before because I found an extra lens in here. All right, so the third one over, third one in the circuit. Um, it was charred as well, so it tested bad. And then this original one over here, it is charred. So the rest of them all test good. Uh, they all light up when I do the continuity test or diode test across them. Okay, so this is the spot where the first burnt LED was. Um, you can see I've removed it right here. Um, I removed it using a heat gun and I've just got a a drill master heat gun and then I've got the Harbor Freight nozzle kit um, that comes with this heat gun accessory kit. Um, I just picked this up today. Now, obviously this isn't gonna be real great for really, really intricate work, but for something where things are spaced this far apart, I think it'll do all right. And obviously there's no heat control or anything crazy like that on there, but you just wait for the solder to melt and go with it. Now, the LED that came off of this board, the original one, is, I believe, a 3030. So it's three millimeters square. Um, and I've got a roll of the flexible LED strip, and it has the 3528 LEDs. Okay, so I got the replacement LEDs in, and we've got the solder pads on both of these spots cleaned up. And now I'm gonna attempt to solder two of these in, see if this TV will light up. Okay, so got a little flux on the pads here. Uh, here's the LED. I need to check polarity. Uh, the small pad is the positive, and the larger pad is the negative, and so I need to position it this direction. Positive here on this side, negative on this side. So, just got my heat gun, and I've put it on the high setting, or I'm sorry, I'm going to put it on the low setting. Temperature ways, this gun, it's the same temperature, just a different fan speed, so I don't want the the blower to blow the LED off. I'm going to try to hold it in place with my tweezers as best as I can, but um, low speed fan. Appears to be stuck down good. Got a little rubbing alcohol here. Clean the flux off. And 
then now that that's in place, we'll take our meter, set it on continuity or diode mode, and check just to make sure that this one is in there correctly. And it lights up, so we're good. I'm going to do the other one and then I'll stick the lens back on and I'll bring you back for the test reveal. So here's something to note. Um, this is the other LED that was bad and earlier when I checked continuity to test that LED I could obviously see it was burnt but I had continuity across plus and minus. Um, I unsoldered the LED, the burnt LED and I, again, checked continuity with the LED gone. Now I can see the uh, solder tabs, the, the little copper pads that have solder on them, and they're not touching, but I still had continuity. Um, I don't know if it'll show in the video, and I know if I get any closer, it's just gonna get blurry, but right here, outside of the copper pad, there's a little, um, where it actually burnt the board a little bit. And I guess there was enough carbon in there that it was completing the circuit between these two pads. So I just took this little T-pin and scraped away between the uh, two pads here and just cleaning some of that out because I can't have continuity across those, otherwise it's gonna short out again. So I'm gonna get that cleaned up, make sure it's extra good, and then I'll solder the new LED on there and we'll try it out. All right, here we are. Plugged in, LEDs soldered in. I didn't put the lenses back on yet, but see what happens. <laughs> yes oh man that's right all right so works i'm gonna get the lenses put back on and get it buttoned up we'll have a working tv this is awesome Alright guys, so that does it for this one. TV turned out super great, really happy with it. Um, I was lucky to find this one on a local um, sale page, Facebook sale page, and he only wanted $5 for the TV. Uh, I was able to do some preliminary checks and I, I knew kind of some common issues to look for for this TV, and it turned out to be those two LEDs bad. So um, I've got under $15 in repairing this TV, just took me a couple hours and good to go. Got a 55 inch TV for super cheap. Really happy with how it turned out. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Um, and until next time, be sure to give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you next time.